Happy New Year to you. I'd like to start this week's midweek reflection with a quote from Bishop Tutu. Archbishop Tutu wrote the following words in his book No Future Without Forgiveness. So we remember him with such fondness and his legacy is not just for the past but for the future of our world. God does not give up on anyone for God loved us from all eternity. God loves us now and God will always love us. All of us, good and bad, forever and ever. His love will not let us go. For God's love for us, all of us, good and bad, is unchanging, is unchangeable. Someone has said there is nothing I can do to make God's love me, God love me more. For God loves me perfectly already. And wonderfully, there's nothing I can do to make God love me less. God loves me as I am to help me become all that I have in me to become. And when I realize the deep love God has for me, I will strive for love's sake to do what pleases my lover. Words from the late Archbishop Tutu. Today is the 6th of January. The Epiphany of our Lord. And as always for midweek reflection, it helps to sit comfortably. And if you wish to close your eyes or hold your hands like this or in another way, and it may give you some moments to letting the inner self find some quiet. You are listening to this week's reflection and it may help you to receive some new light on your life. Pray to be able to get in touch with your deeper desire of revival and light. So let us pray. Lord Jesus, you said that you are the light of the world and the way, the truth and the life. Grant me to discover how to journey with you towards newness of light. The passage for Epiphany is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 9 to 11. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. So my dear friends, we come now to the climax of the journey of the Magi, to the moment when they find Jesus and worship him. The light of a star guided them to the small town of Bethlehem, stopping over the house where they discover Mary and Jesus. Notice that this stage of the journey was marked by great joy. If Herod's Jerusalem is a city of power and intrigue, Bethlehem proves to be a place of simplicity and of prayer. Thus with deep consolation the Magi arrive at the moment of adoration. The Gospel tells us that they entered into the house. At long last their wisdom has led them to discover the newborn king, the goal of their whole journey. But did these searchers from the East understand the unique presence of God in this child? Matthew, Matthew does not tell us what went on in their minds in their moment of adoration, but the words he uses seem to imply a certain leap of faith by these pagan seekers. We are told that they fell down and worshipped him, or in other translations, they knelt and adored him. What is adoration? It is the highest form of prayer, where someone is overwhelmed by a sense of the glory and presence of God. In the Bible, it is associated with intense awareness of both the holiness and the closeness of God, and frequently the response is not just spiritual, but also physical. The person falls prostrate on the ground 
as in Ezekiel's vision. Or at the very end of Matthew's Gospel where disciples fell down before the risen Lord. The Magi offer a similar gesture of silent veneration. It is worth remembering that bodily position can be as important as a verbal expression of reverence. So again, sit comfortably, breathe calmly and silently repeat some phrase as one imagines oneself there is there in the gospel scene. Lord Jesus or hallowed be thy name or addressed to Mary, the Lord is with thee. And do not forget to let the words quieten into a silence where the heart lost in wonder simply enjoys the presence of Jesus. The theologian Hans Urs von Balthasar said, contemplation starts when the mystery begins to reveal itself in all its vastness, something impossible has happened. God manifests himself in a human life. So as you reflect at this time, have the courage to simplify the gaze of your heart before this epiphany of God's glory in Jesus. And I'd like to conclude our epiphany midweek reflection with this short prayer and may it send you wherever you, the Lord may lead you in the next few days and weeks. So let us pray. Creator of the heavens who led the Magi by a star to worship the Christ child, guide and sustain us that we may find our journey's end in Jesus Christ, our Lord.